put to the cloud instead. I think that's a better way to save it. Okay. I wanted to make sure I had you. Okay, sorry. Go oh, ahead. That's okay. Um, so, um, Diane or Cynthia, were you able to send people the um, email stuff yes. that I sent you? Yes. So yes, all, we did. Yeah. all of you got that? All of you who I can see, or if I can't see it, can you give me a yep? Did you do it with your students? Um, yeah, I mean, yep. Um, I'm seeing a couple people that I know have the tools in their hand. So when I was asked to do this workshop, they gave it a toolkit title. And I thought, well, what, you know, what are you going to say? And how are you going to do this? And I thought, well, what better to do than offer um, some tools? And so I am going to use um, the test taking toolkit, the, 20, the one that says 20 point inspection. To, to go through some test taking. Um, I wonder if each of you who are on here, do you, do you have any particular concerns for yourself, any particular classes that cause difficulty, or are you just looking for general strategies? If a couple people could just let me know, that'd be great. So <laughs> far, uh, I think I'd like uh, general strategies. Uh, sort of recently, I've been fine with, well, with tests in all the classes. I think at least. Okay, so we're gonna do general. Anybody else want to weigh in? Are there any like test strategies for biology? Because our last test, we only had 30 minutes to take the test for like 45 questions and it was kind of difficult. Okay, so um, is that class um, open book, open note, or are you supposed to have everything closed down? Um, I don't think it's supposed to be open book. I mean, even if it was, there isn't like enough time to go through it because there's only 30 minutes. Okay. So um, what I'll talk about is efficiency, but you are presenting a situation that is really tough because you have a lot of information that you have to go through. So you really, really, really have to know your stuff when you get into that test framework, don't you? Mm-hmm. Okay, so some of the things I'm going to talk about today, it, it, sometimes it doesn't matter what the content is, it matters how tight the prep is. So hopefully something I say today will help you gain some efficiency um, so you are able to put information in and spit it out rather quickly, okay? Anybody else have anything that's on their mind particularly? Okay, I'm going to roll then. Um, you can see my screen with the 20 point inspection. Correct? Yep. Okay. Yep. So I know you can all read these points on here. I, I totally get that. And I don't think I'm going to spend a lot of time on these, but there are some that I feel are more important than others. I think the best way to use this tool is to print it off and do an assessment of yourself. Click off. What, what have you done? What do you need to do? And if you need to do any follow-up, make a note of that. And either you can follow up with me, you can follow up with Cynthia, Diane, or Chris. You can follow up with peer tutoring. But this gives you a sense of how many strategies do you have in place and which ones could you potentially put in place to do better. So um, do all of you have your textbooks? Can you give me a head nod or a yes? OK, that's not always the case. So I, I have to put that out there. Um, reading a textbook, um, what, what I hear in college is, well, my instructor didn't tell me to read the textbook. <laughs> so in college, um, they don't, there's a sense from instructors that they don't need to tell you to read the textbook. That's just an expectation. So if you are not reading your textbook and you're trying to do well on tests by um, looking over their PowerPoint notes or listening to lecture, I think you're going to have a very hard time passing tests because those PowerPoint notes are just a tiny framework of ideas. The textbooks will fill out the context and give you a bigger picture of the concepts. And if you're taking tests, especially where you have to apply knowledge rather than just answer vocabulary questions, there is going to be no substitute for reading your textbooks. So that's things like psychology classes, sociology, um, history classes, things like that. Uh, you have to read. And while you're reading, taking notes. How many of you take notes or how many of you take notes, actively take notes while you're reading? I can't see all your heads, so can you weigh in with some type of verbalization like yes or 
No, or not necessarily. That sounds like a good idea. I probably should use it more. Mm -hmm. um, I, what I, my experience is people are not used to taking notes out of textbook reading. I think many people are coming out of high school not having to have read textbooks much at all, and then therefore not having to take notes. So points three and four on my list about taking notes and having a system for taking notes go together. I think a lot of people don't take notes because they don't have a system for taking notes. And that's a whole nother topic for me. I could get into it today, but I'm not going to too much except to say I have some good handouts a little packet of note-taking information. If you'd like that, you could email me or Diane or Cynthia and we can get that to you. Um, one of the easiest ways to take systematic notes is to take the headings throughout the chapter and turn them into a question and then read a small chunk and answer that question after you've read it and try and put things in your own words. That's a simple strategy. There are other strategies. Has anybody here ever done Cornell notes? Have you been forced to do Cornell notes? Anybody? What are those? Cornell notes are where you divide your paper and on one side, um, you'll put a key term. On the other side, you write a short description of that term or concept. And after you've filled up that page, on the bottom, you draw a line across the bottom and you kind of put into two or three sentences a summary of all the notes you took on that page. And the goal of Cornell notes is to take the piece of paper and fold over your descriptors so you look at the key terms when you want to review the information, okay? A lot of people don't love Cornell notes. Some people do, but um, it's a system for both taking notes and reviewing notes. Um, another way is just simply doing an outline. And some other people who are very visual sometimes do mind maps where you draw a big bubble in the center with the main idea or the heading. And then if there are subheadings in the chapter, you do smaller bubbles and then little notes off of each of those for the little details. So there's a lot of different ways to take systematic notes and some systems work for some people and other system, and some people say Cornell works for one person, it might not work for everybody. So if you wanna go over any of that, I know I can do that with you. I don't know about Diane and Cynthia, do you feel you've got a bag of tricks for that as well? Oh, sure. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Having a system helps you. And I'm going to tell you this, that taking notes from a textbook isn't easy work. But the more time you spend at the front end, the better your test prep is going to be because all that time that you have to take to write things in your own words means you're already encoding and putting information in your head while you're taking the notes. And if you happen to be taking open book exams, you'll have a nice set of condensed notes already in front of you. You don't have to scramble through textbooks and PowerPoints and things like that. So hopefully you're attending class or looking at your classes regularly if they're fully online, because that's another opportunity to take notes during lecture. And you'll find that in the next couple points, what I talk about is at some point, there's very much power in combining the notes that you've taken from the text, from lecture, and from PowerPoint and putting what you find in common among all those together on a key concept sheet. Because what you'll find if things overlap in your textbook, if they're said in the textbook, if they're mentioned in a PowerPoint and your instructor mentions them in class, where else are you gonna see those next? On a test, right? Yeah, yeah. I I was trying to say that even though I was muted. <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of people are. So, okay. So what I'm saying is take notes prior to lecture, follow up with comparing that to your PowerPoint notes, and then rewrite the key ideas onto a new sheet. So you're, you're condensing information. Again, the act of condensing important terms is a way to begin the memorization process. Okay. 
Um, I mentioned in the list, um, after condensing all your notes, to use a three to five day study plan. And I've, I've given you all of those. And um, what I really like about this list uh, are a couple things that I want to point out to you. I love how they have different columns for active preparation for tests and active review. Because one thing that I know about people who are struggling with tests is they don't have a plan, a really solid systematic plan for preparing for tests, much less a three or five day study plan that involves both preparing, meaning taking notes, condensing notes, maybe turning no notes into bubble maps, creating flashcards, that's the prep stuff. But you also have to have plenty of time to review your stuff. And the more times you can practice saying your information out loud um, or writing it down with just a little prompt, the more times you can practice that, the, how I say it is, the deeper the ditch you're digging in your brain to that information. You're strengthening that circuit. The more times you say, you put a word in front of you and you spit it out and go, okay, that means this. And you have to be able to say it without peeking or checking your notes. And when you can do that and you can do it readily, and this speaks to biology, you have to have such solid prep to be able to pull that information out of your brain quickly. So it's more important to probably have a five day study plan where as soon as you get new terms, you're putting them in your brain and you're practicing spitting them out and you're putting it in and spitting it out. Um, who asked about biology? I heard a voice, but I was moving my screen around. I'm not sure. Um, I, I was going to ask if you do flashcards, because that's a really good way to have a very quick way to go through that information. And if you know a concept, you put it on the right side. If you're going through and you can't immediately say a term, you put it on the left side. That means I don't know. And then you have to go through the I don't know pile repeatedly. But the more to opportunities to practice that information, the quicker you're going to be able to go get that information on test day. If you just study the night before, that's not sufficient, especially in a circumstance like those biology tests. Um, I talk about having a variety of memorization strategies. Does anybody have any strategies that they use that they know work really well? Trying to find, uh, I know my mom uh, sometimes wants, would like me to look at any quizlets of the things online. They're sort of like online flashcards. At least some of them can be online flashcards. Okay. And I think that's a good strategy because Quizlet um, does flashcards and you can look at that information in different ways. I feel like Quizlet is no substitute for handwriting um, flashcards though, because staring at Quizlet cards that somebody else created can be somewhat passive. And if you have any sort of attention problems, I think it's very easy to just kind of passively look at them and go, yeah, I kind of get that. So um, the act of writing information often gets information in your brain, but I think it's a good way to mix things up, Joe. Anybody else have strategies they use? Uh, same as Joe, I just kind of use Quizlet and everything they have to offer on there. Okay. And I would say that that's great. And I would mix it up with doing something that involves your kinesthetic work and your original words for definitions as well, if you can, okay? Or maybe making your own quiz, if that's yeah. something you feel comfortable enough. Right. But. Anytime you can put terms in your own words, and you could do that with Quizlet, that means you understand the information. If you can't take terms, and put them in your own words and condense them, that means you don't understand the concept. So that would be a good exercise for sure. Um, one thing that I talk about, it's further down the checklist, but it, it does relate to having memorization strategies is creating visuals, mnemonics, or associations. Um, again, I'm gonna go talk to biology and any tests where there's tons of information where you have to pull out of your brain. You want the quickest route back to find that information when you need it. Your brain will go get pictures faster than it gets words. So if there's 
anything in the content that you're doing that can be made into a picture that you can also associate with that word. Say you're making a flashcard and you put the term and you can draw a picture of a body part, a bone, a this, a that, a cell, a whatever it is you're studying. Even if your drawing isn't great, your brain will go get pictures faster than it gets words. So that's one way to speed up that retrieval process. Mnemonics are another. Do you know what I'm talking about when I say mnemonics? Sort of like uh, war representation, sort of like you abbreviate it into a way of remembering it, like Roy G. Biv for right. the Close of the Rainbow. Right, right. So you take, um, what you do is you take a lot of terms and if you can organize them into one new word, um, like uh, the example I get, like Roy G. Biv is a good one um, because you're taking seven colors and you're condensing them really into just one little name or, you know, a first name and a last name. You're condensing seven parts into two or three smaller parts and your brain can only handle, um, you know, about seven to nine digits of information at a time. So if you can condense the information and create, if you have to remember a list and you can take the first letter of each of the words you have to remember and create a nonsense word or a real word out of them, your brain will go get that information faster. I give an example of like, not that anybody needs to remember the Great Lakes right now, but Holmes, H-O-M-E-S, is a mnemonic for the Great Lakes, Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, Superior. I use one word to remember five concepts. And then any associations you can make, um, because how learning works is you take new information and you attach it to something you know already. So if you have a new word in biology or history or whatever classes you're taking that sounds like something you know or looks like something you know, or um, if you can associate it with, um, uh, put some words in a rhyme to a song, you know, making associations in your brain helps speed up information and encode information better. Um, like I said, there's no, there's no substitute for practicing and practicing and practicing information several days ahead of time. Um, and I encourage you to do that and look at that three to five day study plan and especially look at how they've laid out a sample of what, what would you do on three or five days ahead of time and look at that. Um, I think it's fair to ask instructors about the test format. Have any of you done that at all? Do you, or are you kind of, does that kind of freak you out a little bit? Yeah, I, I asked them, I, I remember asking uh, a teacher, one of my econ teachers, you know, it turns out uh, a, uh, I remember for the first test, it seemed like they had two attempts, but for this one, it turns out we have one, and it turned out we only have two for the first one because that's just to get you used to the whole test taking style. Yeah, so I think it's fair to ask instructors questions, as many as you can think about about the test. The worst thing that can happen is they're gonna say, I can't tell you about that. So I think it's fair to ask things like, how many questions is it? What's the format? Are there practice tests? How would you prepare for the test? Where did these questions come from? Are they coming from the textbook? Are they coming from your lecture? Because boy, does that save you a lot of time and effort if you can really focus in on, on where you need to spend your time. So that could be an email, or remember that your instructors have five office hours a week that they can give to you and you can do a short meeting with them. And the more connection you make with your instructors and the more you show your interest in the class and doing well, I, I think they'll be more open to having discussion, discussions with you about the tests. I'm not saying they're gonna give you the answers, but you certainly can ask all those questions. And it puts you ahead of the people who do like one thing I learned from my son who's a freshman here is he took stats as a senior in high school and he's taking college algebra now. There are practice tests and um, 
what he's learned by saying, you know, are there practice tests? Can I do those? He's learned that the practice tests in my math lab look a lot like the actual tests. And if you take the time to do those, and the instructors have said, do them, do them repeatedly. You can do them over and over. He's finding that that's really helping him do well on tests. Um, other things are eating well and sleeping well prior to a test. Uh, uh, I know it's hard for college students. I know it's hard in COVID world because people's um, Cycles are all off track, but um, if you are in a cycle of not having good sleep, your brain, um, your ability to memorize and encode information decreases significantly. So if you're coming up on important tests, you want to make sleep a priority if you can. Um, you also don't want to have yourself too caffeinated or too sugared up, ready to take a test, because what happens with that is you can get yourself really um, amped up on caffeine or sugar, and then that doesn't last long and you can dip down while you're taking a test and that might affect your ability to recall information. You wanna have a good breakfast, you wanna have a good solid meal. Um, so you have a real steady um, insulin supply in your bloodstream and you can focus, trying to stay away from junk and caffeine so you can really um, be alert and focused in. Um, I don't know if anybody, um, probably nobody creates a worry sheet, but this might be a simple sort of um, technique that you can do if you've got a very busy brain and you're very anxious when you come to tests. Um, I've said this over and over again, research has proven that if you make a list of the things you're worried about or your things that you have to do, um, that will keep swirling in your head while you're taking the test. If you download them onto paper, you open up more space for thinking and retrieving information. They did a study on this at the University of Chicago and they found that um, people who wrote that worry list increased their test scores compared to people who didn't. And then um, for anxious test takers, I don't know if you use any self calming strategies before tests because what research also tells us is anxious brains can't, can't pull information out of their brains. So there are some resources in the U at IVCC portal um, about square breathing or just simply um, one thing that I have learned that I, I find is really important is um, simple breathing techniques like breathing in for three counts, but exhaling for more than three counts is supposed to um, do something with your vagus nerve that really can calm a system. So inhale for three, Exhale for five, do that repeatedly. Sometimes breathing doesn't work for me because I'm pretty hyper, um, so that's hard to do. So I will take a very brisk walk and get outside and do something very physical before I sit down because that calms me down. You guys all know what cal is calming for you. So I'd be curious to know um, very quickly, are there any strategies that you've heard that you, you would implement? And Joe, you've been answering a lot. I would love to hear from other people as well. Do you, have you heard different things um, that you might try to implement on this list? I think I might want to try uh, trying to see which I would remember, which ones I would probably would want to have the most. I Some of those I, no, ready some of them. Uh, I think I might want to go back to creating flashcards and review sheets. I know back when I was studying German in high school, my mom would have me create study cards for the vocab, and I remember them well enough for the test. Hopefully, yeah. Anybody else? Um, I don't have any other strategies, but could I get more examples on the create the worry later? Yeah. Um, anything that's swirling in your mind, um, you know, personal worries that are going on in your world, just write them down, you know, have to take care of this or, you know, like there was one period of my life where <laughs> one of my people was causing me a lot of worry, you know, just, um, you know, just write down what you're worried about and get it downloaded off the list, like have to, um, 
you know, take this person to the doctor or have to follow up with mom and dad's appointment or have to call the, the, the doctor or the court or the whatever, you know, whatever it is going on. Other things could be simple to do is Virginia, like what, you know, what is on my mind? Like I have to call, I, I have a meeting later or I have to um, call the dentist or I have to make sure I get supper made for tomorrow. All big things and little things, as many as you can dump out because that downloads the stuff that keeps swirling. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Um. I know we've only got till 2.30. I can talk a super long time, so I have to, I have to watch myself. Um, I do want to address the, the other sheet real quick, so let me get to that. Uh, give me one second. Yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, open book tests because I, I wonder how many people are having those and... Um, on one second. And what I'm finding is those prove to be trickier for students than what they might expect. And um, I think the biggest key on this sheet um, is actually, I probably should have put it on the top, is it's the second last one. Purposely try to memorize as much information as possible so you don't have to look for each answer. Your instructors actually want you to memorize the information when you have an open book test. <laughs> Um, it may not feel like that because they say just use whatever you want, but they set the controls up on the test um, so that you have a limited amount of time and they do that because they want you to memorize the information. So you can use all the tools on the last checklist to do that, but if you find that you're overwhelmed with the amount of information, then what you have to do is condense what you do not know and use the rest of these tools to organize your information. You shouldn't be going into an open book test with um, trying to flip between computer screens back and forth. That's why you need some notes in a notebook. The flip in between computer screens, I don't know how any of you could possibly humanly do that. That would never work for me. I would have to take notes off the, if my textbook is on a computer, I would have to take notes from there. Then what I would do with those notes is I would be sure that they are, that when I take notes, I have a page number next to them. So if I have to reference something during my, on my test, I know right where to go back to. If I had several pages of notes in my notebook, I would have them labeled, flagged, or color-coded according to concept. So you can easily find what you're looking for. If you have a textbook, an actual textbook, which seems like a rare beast, it's like a unicorn anymore to have an actual textbook in front of you, get yourself a pad of sticky notes and label things as that put the concept on them um, so you can easily go through your textbook if you need to find information. The more organized you are with having notes and then condensing your notes and flagging your notes, the better off you're going to be. But start with memorization. Don't go into that test thinking, ah, I'll just find it. Because how many of you have been in a situation where you've had an open book or open note test and you find yourself completely scrambling and running out of time? So the prep is um, pretty serious for these things. So again, I would use this checklist just the way you did the other one if you're having open book time tests. Um, and see what you're doing already. And if you need help, if you, if you decide that you need to implement some other strategies, you absolutely have to reach out. So I want to leave a couple minutes um, to kind of see if there are questions, assess if you need any, if there are more resources you think you could use, things that I didn't address. I'm going to stop sharing so I can see everybody again. Does anybody have anything to add or ask? Not that I can think of. Okay. Have I given you any tools you can use? I can see Plenty. some. Plenty, yeah. 
Okay. Okay. Diane, Cynthia, any words of wisdom? I tell you, I think that the, what I really like on this, on these handouts is that sample five day study plan for an exam. And it's so nice to see, like if you were doing a test on four chapters, it's all laid out here with times and how to develop a study sheet at the beginning of each day and then review what you did the day before. I think that's really, really a helpful tool to use. I would, I would pay a lot of attention to that. And, and another thing, I'm glad you brought that up. One thing I like about it especially is, do you notice there's a box for time? I, I tell students yes. who feel overwhelmed by the amount of tasks they have to time themselves to see how, how long reading a chapter or reading five pages takes. And if you've done that, then you can fill in that time box and say, okay, you know, today I'm going to need two hours to do the prep. But like you know, for review, that only takes me a couple minutes to go through so many flashcards. And that helps you plan your week and your days as you move towards a test. So I think the word is systematic, systematic, systematic. And I, I, I would guess even some of the best students here at IVCC aren't fully systematic about reading and taking notes and making a plan for studying. The more you plan, the less time it's going to take to do all of this. Instead of just sitting, some students just tell me that I, I've read the textbook or I've read my notes I, and they just read them over and over but not do anything really active like you said, you know, where you're retaking notes or you're doing something active or I think speaking out loud to yourself is a really, really good thing. I do that a lot. I'm always talking to myself, but when I'm trying to remember something, just saying it out loud gets it, you know, tucked into your memory so much better. Right. And if you can talk draw, mm -hmm. write, read, you have all those options for retrieval in your brain because your brain has different ways to go get that stuff. And everybody's brain set up different, but if you put it in multiple ways and spit it out, you'll have more ways to access the information. That's how brains work. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you need any follow-up from me, um, Hopefully you can, you know where to find me. I, I didn't put anything specific out here, but um, many of your faces I've seen or we've interacted um, before. Um, so um, reach out to me if you need something. And I know Diane and Cynthia are also amazingly helpful. Lots of resources here, okay? And we both have forms in our offices. Mm -hmm. so yeah, if you couldn't we do weekly today. assignments, that sort yeah. of thing. Yep, and we'll mail them out if you need them, okay? Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tina. Yeah, thanks, Tina. Okay, oh, hey, can I do a little plug before everybody's gone? Can yeah. I do a little yeah. advertisement? Yeah. Next, next week is Mental Health Awareness Week, and I always make a big deal of trying to um, make people aware that mental health, especially on college campuses, is, is on the rise, and I make, try to make a special point to say that because I, I never want people who are struggling with mental health issues to feel like they're alone. It's a big deal and it's not just on college campuses either. So um, we're doing a couple little different activities. I'm going to put a PowerPoint together that maybe faculty will show. Um, we are doing animal therapy, um, virtual animal therapy. So watch for an announcement for that. There'll be our, a therapy dog um, Monday and then we have goats. They aren't official therapy goats, but um, if you like animals, uh, we have those available for you just to watch and relax and um, watching animals in nature. It can be calming. We talk about calming activities. So, um, so um, we're doing that and um, watch for uh, just a, a couple awareness things that um, you'll either see in, in Blackboard um, or um, post it elsewhere to, to kind of share facts and tips and resources, okay? Awesome, thanks, Tina. Yep, okay, now I'm done. Thank you. See ya. Jonathan, I'm sorry I didn't see you in the waiting room. I just let oh. someone in who I didn't know was waiting and maybe he's gone now. No, oh. there he is. Is he there? Jonathan, hi. I'm sorry I didn't see you in the wait room to, to let you in, but we've recorded this session and um, we will get that out to you so that you can view it and see it. Sorry mm -hmm. about that. So basically, 